Hi guys, my name is Joe Rogers and I'm the CEO of Navistar Legal and we are creating a tribe of next generation lawyers to provide affordable legal wisdom to small and mid-sized businesses. And today, as I have been doing, I've been interviewing amazing business people. Um, I met Addy through um, LinkedIn and I'm going to ask Addy to give himself an introduction. This Addy came of, it, came of it and he's from Virtual Actuaries. Addy, tell me a little bit about you and I guess your background. How did you come to set up Virtual Actuaries? Thanks. So I feel so blessed to be put into the category of amazing business people. <laughs> you said it, not me, but I hope that I'll live up to it. I think amazing business people are people that are able to sweep, you know, <laughs> and clean up <laughs> after everyone else. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, the quick story is that uh, over the years, I worked in a, a lot of different businesses and about 10 years ago, I started a recruitment business for actuaries. I was there for about, I worked in, I owned the business for about eight years and then <clears throat> I needed to take the network of actuaries and do something different with it because unfortunately websites like LinkedIn made it impossible for a recruiter really to uh, work. And, and get good roles. And so after much deliberation and a few different ideas, I decided to rather open up a consultancy with a, a group of very talented actuaries and we opened up virtual actuaries. So that brings us to here. I'm the air traffic controller of the business. Uh, you get the pilots, you get the passengers, you get the, the, the ground staff. I'm the person who tries my best to make sure people don't crash into each other. What a great way of describing it. And, and and what a great pivot. So you pivoted as a result of tech coming in. You suddenly went, hmm, this isn't working as well. Let's set up something different. Well, it sounds, it sounds wonderful in hindsight. But the reality is the reason people pivot is because they're at the edge of a cliff. Mm. And it's, you know, needing to pivot is probably... The, re the realization that you need to pivot is probably the most devastating thing anyone can get to. But if you can get to a point where you can successfully pivot, well, it's, well, then it's the stuff of legend. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that wanted to pivot, but not so easy to do so. Very tricky. It, it kind of brings me to the idea of change because what I, I mean, people say that all the time, you know, when you get, you know, business mentors and you get, oh, just pivot, pivot. <laughs> there's that, there's that um, friends moment where they're moving the, the sofa around. Somebody said to me, you know, pivot, it's like, pivot, pivot. You pivot, gotta move, pivot. you gotta move. Exactly. It yeah, sounds like, crazy. like it just, oh yeah, you've just got to pivot. <clears throat> but actually there's a lot of mental change that happens in that time. Like what happened for you? For you? Was that one of, was, was that a kind of big business challenge? <laughs> Was it easy for you to do? Like, what happened to you in making that change? So, I think it's very similar to the situation we're all in at the moment, mm. where you're, or you're in a situation of desperation. Mm. You, know, you know, one always looks at the pipeline of work that you have into the future. You know, you, 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 know, you walk proud. You, ah, we got clients. You know, where are we going? There's vision. There's, you know, we, <clears throat> if you're lucky, there'll be exponential growth. But any growth or any direction is beautiful. The problem is, as soon as you see that that is now switched off, then it's like, you know, <clears throat> okay, so let's reevaluate what we can do with the tools that we already have. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, like a lot of people probably listening, they have tools, they've established businesses. One doesn't just craw crawl under the covers, which is actually what you want to do. If you feel that you want to crawl under the covers, that's a great sign that you need to pivot, <laughs> unfortunately. I love, I love that. That's great. And do you have, I'm kind of going off, uh, off topic. No, no, I'll no, no so I'll, so I'll tell you what happened. So, so yeah. you asked me why I got to that point. Well, yeah. in a simplistic way, when I realized that LinkedIn was very disruptive for the mm -hmm. recruitment business, we pivoted. So okay. Amazing. And, and was there anything that you... In hindsight, would do differently, or do you think you know what exactly what we did was exactly what we needed to do in setting up your business? I mean, setting up the new branded business. What what, what would you do differently? <clears throat> so, 
I wouldn't do anything differently because in hindsight it worked out. Mm. <clears throat> but it wasn't the first idea that I decided to go with. Unfortunately, the pivot took two years. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, it was two, you know, the pivot doesn't just, bah, I mean, you, you know, it never, so, but it was two years of four different ideas and dissecting those ideas. Now, when I mean dissecting, I mean thinking about them nonstop mm. for two years. Excuse me, you think of the first idea, hmm, you dissect it, not so good. You think of the second idea, hmm, not so good. And, and when I got to the, I think this was the fourth or the fifth idea, you know, so, so a pivot really is <clears throat> a nonstop thought process. That's not one quick meeting where you, you, know, you really have to think about it. Yeah. And and it and it takes time. That's what I, I like about that message. It takes time because it'd be so easy to think in this moment where things are changing so much. Like, oh, okay, yeah, oh yeah, I'll just go and I'll go off and do that. Actually, it takes a lot of time and it takes iteration. That's what I love about that's what I love about business people is that oh, there's there's not so much attachment to right. This is what we do, and I'm sticking to that. It's like okay, right, change, time to change, time to move on. Um, and I guess now is. <clears throat> is as much a time to change as anything. How well, I mean, you know, so, so I can bring up a quick topic, which I think will resonate with a lot of people. You know, a lot of people have been the manager, the mm -hmm. business owner, the presence at the office. Mm. Now, <clears throat> no one is in the office at the moment. Mm. Everybody has to pivot, unfortunately, at the moment. And so the, you know, the key really is to try to understand what are the strengths that you bring to the business and more so what strengths does your business bring to the market and to be able to do that from home. You know, there's, there's no point in thinking, <clears throat> you know, this is going to last three weeks or a month or two months or three months. You know, the reality is, is a real directional change is about acceptance that this is the new norm. Mm -hmm. So I would rather say to anybody thinking at the moment, where to from here, <clears throat> it's really about, I want you to almost imagine, or I'm, I'm speaking to myself, that this is it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're never going back to the office. If you do, it's a bonus. But this is it. So get on with it. it. Yeah, and that, I mean, and it is it for a, certainly for, for a period of time, and who knows when that's going to, that's going to end. So have things changed for you? Because you work from home normally, right? Or, or how, how have things changed for you in the business world? We'll talk about personally later, but specifically in the business world, how have things changed over the last few weeks? Everybody is affected mm. for many reasons. You know, we all have to pay those that work with us, whether we can, you know, actually utilize their services or not. So there are certain service providers that we have to pay because we've committed to paying them. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. So we're affected <clears throat> because we have a responsibility to other people that rely on us. That's the first thing. <clears throat> the second thing is that luckily our business has been set up for such a scenario you know, we run what is known as a lean business. Mm -hmm. And I've spoken before that lean is not about saving money or about, you know, not spending money. Lean is about <clears throat> if you are hit with a crisis, you will pray to God that you were a lean business because a lean business is that you don't have massive overheads that you can't get out of. It's not about saving the money. It's about if hit with a crisis, the lean businesses will survive. Okay, so that's the first thing. So we're a lean business, and so we, it hasn't hit us financially as far as commitments that we've got to offer space and, and salaries and so on. <clears throat> the other way that it's affected us is that in any situation, clients will be holding back slightly mm -hmm. on stuff that they want done. Yes. <clears throat> what I've tried to do is to utilize, firstly, I mean, I've been working from home for years and years and years. A lot of our actuaries work inside the client's offices anyway, although we have a, we have a flexi arrangement where they can work digitally, digitally and remotely on most occasions, and we've pushed for that. And, they, and so it, it, it hasn't actually disrupted that at all, okay? 
As a final note, what this has really done is that it's allowed me to refocus on what the clients are going through at the moment. In my circumstance, I believe that, you know, we, re we rent out actuaries. That's what we do. We have, you know, teams of actuaries and the clients utilize us for a year at a time, six months at a time. We're a, we're, we're a full turnkey actuarial consultancy and the clients utilize our actuaries. In most cases, we, we become an extension of the in-house team. And Our rates are. Boys, don't you? You work with the big clients. You know the the. You work with the big corporates, don't you? <clears throat> yeah, and eighty eighty five percent of our clients are the biggest insurers, reinsurers, banks in 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 the in South Africa and in some cases the world as well. And so. <clears throat> What I've tried to understand now is, you know, they would need work done. There's work that needs to be done. Now, under normal circumstances, they would, they would go through the HR team to try and hire somebody internally because that's normally how they do it. And then in circumstances where they want to use a consultancy, we would hope that they would choose us over our competition. Okay. But I've also realized that the potentially the HR team and the hiring process at our clients at the moment is is a lot trickier because they don't really know what's going to happen how long is this going to last do they want to hire somebody full-time or not so I, i've spent hours and hours and hours on the phone right now phoning the clients and just reminding them that my my understanding is that if they have work that needs to be done that normally they wouldn't want to use a consultancy because they'd rather have somebody in-house they are never going to get to a point where they can hire somebody full-time now it's just there's too much uncertainty they don't know what's going on so you know what let's rather just you know, mention that. So rather just outsource to us for three months, six months, because we're already on your preferred suppliers list. Okay, so you were talking to me about um, the things that have changed. And one of the things you were saying, and I wanted to come back to it, was the lean business and having the lean business. And what does that actually mean? What does that actually mean um, for you? And how do you create that lean business from the start? Like, practically what does that look like so what it looks like is that <clears throat> you know the default of most people when they start a business is let's spend some money you know let's get let's get the big computers let's make it yeah <laughs> you know we, we we want the entrance hall you know we need to be in a prestigious location you know we we need a, a marketing campaign you know you know they think that there's this one big hit you know, that the clients are going to see their, their name in light and they're going to all come. So, so my opinion is that <clears throat> the best way to rather move forward with a business is to try to spend no money. Mm. So what a novel idea. You know, it's like, okay, we need documents to, to, to we, we need a company profile. We need um, a company uh, branding. And, okay, well, you know, surely you don't need a full advertising agency for that. Mm. You see, a lot of the people that start businesses as well, they come from the big corporates. Now, the big corporates, you're the big macha at the table kind of pointing your fingers. You have a marketing department, sales department. Ah, just yeah, we'll get them to do it and come back to me. I'll make a decision. I'll be very strategic. So, <clears throat> you know, we need to understand that, that a lean business is normally for startups. But in most cases, if your mindset is correct, you want your startup to become a very big corporate as well. Mm. But, 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 but the same must hold true. So the lean business is, do you have to have a, a, a full golf day to interact with your clients? Do you have to have a, a, bring your clients in for a cheese and a wine to be able to get a message across to them? No, you don't. You can get your message across in other ways. Do you have to fly business class? Absolutely not. Now, the problem with, the problem with big corporates is that <clears throat> one of the perks of working at a corporate is that you love those perks. Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 you love the lavish desks and, you know, just the smell of leather, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so what happens is, is the problem is, is that, that kind of like, um, uh, you know, when you, that wastage, that wastage has to make its way into the bills that the clients pay. Mm -hmm. So, so what we're, what I'm saying is if you can, the reason why some of the lean companies are taking out the big corporates, why there's this disruption is because the corporates need to really trim away the fat. 
So the lean mindset really just is, you know, how can we get down to absolute basics? You know, is there a template on the internet for documents that we need? Mm. Is there a way that, you know, maybe we don't need a CFO, but maybe we can just outsource the function once a week to somebody for a few hours. You know, the lean mindset says, um, do you have to give away very, very, very expensive corporate gifts when rather you can be a little bit more thoughtful and just try and get the clients to think about you. So there's a lot of things going on there that will allow a business at this time now to go, that was a smart move. You mentioned to me when we first met um, on LinkedIn, you were saying to me uh, your social media strategy, which kind of surprised me, to be honest, because you were talking about Instagram and how you connect. And you also had a philosophy around um, kind of investment and bringing investment in. So, like, do you remember what you were saying? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you do because you, <laughs> yeah. you were very clear about, um, uh, about your philosophies around these. So, yeah, I'd love you to share those because they kind of relate to sales. Mm -hmm. and, keeping lean, but also just selling, like just get out there and sell. Yeah. So there's a lot going on there. So the first thing I'll talk about, if I may, is really about social media and, and which is really your company's branding online. Mm. Okay. So firstly, the email campaigns must stop. You know, uh, we have, I don't think we've ever had an email campaign. It is rude. It is cheap. And, and, and it's, it's, it's basically um, just shocking. Okay, so we don't do any email campaigns. You, you know, when I get emails in, if I, I spot in a split second, you know, if it doesn't go through the spam, that it's just, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll literally just delete it. Mm. Okay. The second thing is that, you know, <clears throat> you, you want, you, firstly, LinkedIn is free. In most cases, you can have your premium accounts, very useful. We have, I have a premium account. It just allows you to do more. Very, very useful. But ultimately, you know, I, I remember once a client w wanted to be involved in something. He was like, well, we just, the only reason we want to be involved, we want the, the industry to know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? They wanted to do a marketing campaign. Any marketing campaign is really about let the industry know what we're up to, what we're doing. It's fresh. So you don't have to have billboards. Okay. So, so ultimately, it's really about content. But it's about relevant content. You don't want to just be passing and re-sharing. You want to create a bit of content like we're doing now. It's relevant. People want to hear about it. And, you know, by default, they'll, 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 see, they'll think about your brand. So it's really just about sharing content, which is fun and interesting. That's really what it, I think social media is really about. It's just your brand is interacting with the Internet in a million different ways. You know, and, and sometimes it's competitions. Sometimes it's just like doing little things that some people might notice. It doesn't have to go out to a million people. But in essence, the key, the most important thing is to try and get to a point where your clients can see it. Mm. That's the key. So how do you get to that point? Well, there's a lot to say there. You know, one of the things, so, so I'll give a quick synopsis of what we did. You know, I had spent 10 years or well, you know, before that, there was also some time at another recruiter building up a network of actuaries. Mm -hmm. In essence, that was a Microsoft Access database or file. I then took that entire database, first name, surname, private email, and mobile number, and I converted it into a .csv file, which is a contact file. Mm -hmm. I then uploaded the contact file to Google uh, Gmail contacts. I then synced my phone with my Gmail contacts, so they all became contacts on my phone. And then when we opened up the Instagram account, the LinkedIn account, all the other accounts, you say, you know, you know, please sync with my contacts. Very nice. Okay. You know, in a simple. Well, you know, yeah. So, and then it will find them for you. You know, would you like to connect with, you know, Jack Jones? Well, yeah, most certainly would. <laughs> you know, so, so Jack Jones, you know, now connect with you. You find the, the correct Jack Jones. Now back in the day, you'd have a raffle, you know, business cards. And this is a way where if you have those business cards, you know, for, unfortunately, it is a manual process of creating the database. And then more than that, you've got your Facebook targeted ads, you use the same list. Mm -hmm. Very useful. Yeah. You know, and then you've got, and, and then you've got, um, there's other platforms. But in essence, really about once you're there and you're interacting with them, you want to put some nice content. So that's kind of how social media Although social media is your business online. And then we talk about, you know, what is known as you as a brand. 
<clears throat> so that is not the company itself, but rather you are the company. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I don't want to go too much into that because there was a thing about, you know, investment that you wanted to, wanted to talk about. But in essence, you know, what used to happen back in the day is company A, which is big corporate, would, you know, want to utilize lawyers. So they would go to a big law firm, ooh, very fancy, schmancy. But why would they go there? They would go there really because of two reasons. Number one, they understood from a credibility perspective that the law firm gave them that kind of like gravitas, so they really liked that. But more importantly, they understood that they could get the specialization that they needed. Mm -hmm. now, now, like yourself, Joe, you are a brand, and if you have a network of lawyers that have that spectrum of specialization, in essence, you cover that. Because if they come to you, you know, I need a very specific lawyer, you know, and the answer is yes, I can provide that lawyer. That's a beautiful starting point for you as a brand to get business and, 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 and that might have gone to a big corporate. That's the first thing. But I can tell you right now that, you know, the credibility of the big organization is not what it used to be. Because, you know, the problem is you would go to XYZ law firm because you knew that Tina was the one that really handled your account beautifully. Now, Tina's not there anymore. So there was a time when they would go to a big law firm and who did the work was inconsequential. But now they want to go and give work to Joe because they trust Joe will find the right person to do the work. And, and in fact, the name of the company is inconsequential. Mm. That's you as a brand instead of the brand as a business. So, so that's kind of the you as a brand market at the moment that we're in. Mm. Um, actually, before we go on to the investment question, I'm curious, are you finding lots of actuaries making the decision and making the jump to, to work in this way? Well, yeah, so our whole business has been, uh, um, Saint has been built around the actuaries as a brand. <clears throat> they are their own brand. You as a person, you know, the clients know that this, young lady over here that is in her early 40s has got 15 years of experience doing solvency reporting in a life insurance capacity. Mm. Very credible, potentially even a valuations actuary. Or yeah. sorry, what we call a statutory actuary. Valuations is on the pension side. She's a stat, she's a stat actuary. Beautiful. Everyone knows her. So now <clears throat> the client wants her to do the work. So, so we would bring those actuaries into our business, but very importantly, the way that we structured the business as what we call a peer review nurturing system for scalability for the senior actuaries that allows them to scale themselves. Mm. So we bring the juniors underneath the seniors. Great. That allows that senior to take on two or three or four clients and have juniors that work underneath her. And do the juniors work? With lots of people, do they just work with that senior, just out of interest? Well, they would work for maybe two seniors at a time. Because right. those seniors would generally keep them quite busy. Yeah. But under normal circumstances, the independent, if they were just working alone, would never be able to scale up a portfolio. Mm. That's the reason we started our business as an organized collaborative of independent actuaries that work together in the collaborative to scale. Mm. So the peer review means they can check the work of those that are underneath them. And it also means that if the client has a chunk of work for them, then the juniors can do the junior work. They can peer review it and mm -hmm. they can do the senior work themselves. So the you as a brand is that actuary scaling themselves and rather building up themselves as a partner yeah. in their own pipeline. It's the same as what would happen at any consultancy where the partners and the, you know, become more senior and they just have a portfolio of clients and they have juniors that work underneath them. So with us, they get over 82% of the money goes to them. Mm, great. They, can they can decide how to apportion that down to the juniors. At a big corporate, you know, probably 50, 60%, if not more, probably more, 70% goes to the big corporate. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So it's, it's 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 quite different to the way that we operate. You know that 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 senior actuary can choose to take fifty percent, forty percent, sixty percent, twenty percent on for that particular client, but apportion some of the work down. So so yes, very much so. We've got the independent actuaries that that will grow into our business and do and become a brand in and of themselves, but under the virtual actuary brand. But in essence, the client chooses them. Mm. And and that's how we grow the pipeline and the whole business. The business is there from an admin and operational and marketing uh, persp- and vision perspective to rather build up those professionals. We're an organized collaborative. It's a long conversation to have about what an organized collaborative is, but uh, but it's a new type of thinking of you as a brand professionals working together in an organized way as a lean business. Right. Really, really good to hear. And I want to ask you about the investment, but I'm just aware we've got we've got limited time to um, to finish up. But I, I want to talk to you about investment because you were saying kind of bringing we had this conversation about sell, 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 like the most important thing for any new business or any business is getting in the sales. But share a bit more about that just before we before we close up. OK, well, our business at them. Thank you. Our business at the moment is still self-funded. We've jumped over about three or four rounds of raising. And I always believe that you should ask an investor that if they were going to invest now, what would they want you to achieve? What would they want you to do? And then then just do that yourself anyway. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. And, you know, we've built up our business to be a, uh, at the moment, a 32 million rand a year revenue business. We just closed off our second year. It's actually a bit more than that anyway, but that's another story. And, um, so, you know, we are looking to do a round to globalize now. Mm. But the reality is, is that, you know, an investor is going to give you money based on your projections. Don't forget if those projections are wrong, there's clawback clauses. So don't get too clever about your projections because just read the fine print on the clawback clauses. If you don't hit those projections, you'll be giving them another 30% for one pound. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so... In essence, what will happen is they will sit in that first boardroom meeting and they'll say, okay, I understand all the fancy schmancy and where you're going, but let me just ask you a question. How many active clients do we have at the moment? Oh, well, we have 20. Can we all commit that by the end of this quarter we'll have 35? Whoa, another 15 clients? What are you talking about? And then they'll say, folks, let me just mention something simple. This business is built on clients buying from us. So let's do whatever we can at the moment to get more clients to buy from us. And then normally what they do is they, you know, ramp up the marketing budget, <clears throat> you know, you know, put in some managers so that they basically they're going to massive marketing campaign, bringing more clients, takes the revenue up as it would <clears throat> potentially at the detriment of quality. But then what will happen is then in, 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 in two years, they would hope to say, oh, a year, oh, look at the revenue number, very impressive. Then they will then sell on the investment to their friends at, a, at another round because the valuation and, 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 and the revenue has gone up. <clears throat> the problem is, is that, you know, you, you rather just, they're going to just tell you to bring in more clients. So rather just take a little step back and <clears throat> just take a step back. So don't worry about your valuation and, and, and don't worry about your revenue numbers as such for now. Just focus firstly on quality of service because you want to repeat customers, but then go get some more clients. Why do you need someone else to tell you to go get some more clients? Because a lot of what happens is, is a lot of paper pushing and admin. You can really get caught up in the admin almost hide away from trying to get more clients. But I, I can tell you now that the admin should be done after hours and weekends. And the pushing for clients is, is significantly more important. That's my philosophy. You know, we've got probably got over 75 clients, in, you know, in two years, you know, they're massive companies. Some are smaller, sure, the insure techs and your fin techs and your investment techs and property techs and so on. <clears throat> but it's all about clients. You know, we, we're building our business into a company that in a few years will have 300 global clients. Mm-hmm. Now, then we have a proper business on our hands. So, so, that, so it's all about paying customers what we call the minimal viable product. You know, some people create, you know, bells and whistles products. They put it out there, no clients. Yeah. 
You have to do a round of raising just to keep the engine going. What's yeah. the point? I mean, it's so interesting that you say this because for me, this in this time right now, the the kind of uh, people, it would be very easy for a lot of small businesses to go, oh well, yeah, it's too late. But actually, now's the time really to get out there and sell. And I don't mean sell in a kind of you know get out there and sell, sell, sell. I mean build the relationships like you were saying keep connect with people keep talking to people see where their problems lie that gives you the opportunity to pivot which is what you're talking about at the beginning and then from there you can build something that is whether or not because i I know many people who who are perfectly investable and make the choice not to raise investment for that exact reason because actually the best investment is sales. The best thing you can do is get out there, sell, and keep going. I mean, I'm talking to myself. I'm not just talking to other people. I'm talking for myself because actually yeah. I need to be reminded of that every day and what I'm doing and just going, right, we've just got to get out there and, and, and get selling. And uh, I love the idea of keeping the admin to the weekend. That's really powerful. And, and if we had to just realign where everyone is at the moment as a final thought on, from my side for on this topic, Yeah. excuse me, it's this, it's, Make it a priority for the day to phone five new potential clients a day. Love it. Just five. I'm not talking about a lot. I try and do five an hour. <clears throat> okay. Just five a day. Now, it might not seem like a lot, but if you can get that right, like actually write one, two, three, four, five on a piece of paper. Okay. That's like your main focus. Everything else is just fluff. And, and dealing with normal work. But then once you phone a new client and you interact with them and you send them an email and they tell them about your business and just cross that one off the list, number two, three. So just do that every day for a week. Think about that. That's 20, a week goes by like this. Wow, you turn around, week's gone. But if you can just do that, that's 25 new people a week. By the end of this crisis, that we're in at the moment, should that last two months, three months, one month, four months, however long it lasts, <clears throat> the best thing that you can do for yourself right now is to interact with five new clients a day, 25 clients a week, 100 cl- new potential clients a month. Mm. Okay, that's a lot. If my numbers are correct, am I right? That's, yeah, that's five, right. yeah. You know, that's a hell of a lot. Imagine two months, 200. So what might just happen from those 200 or 100, you might just pick up three clients that actually want to buy from you. Just three. Now, it may be, you know. Might even be now. No, I'm saying now. The the rest will come around later. But if those three clients actually buy from you now, Mm -hmm. that might just be enough financially to keep you afloat. Yes. Five new clients. That's like my little take home. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I, I think that's so powerful. And the point, the whole point of getting everybody, well, certainly small businesses in this environment, just getting people thinking about how they can, how they can build those relationships. So powerful and connecting with two hundred people. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. But a, but a long, but a long dreary email or like a rude message is not what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about, talking about actually picking up the phone to people. Picking up the, get, get on the phone yeah. and you have to speak to mm. five new clients. Speak Love to that. five new clients. That's okay. a challenge. That's the challenge I'm going to take on as well. That's, that's fabulous. Abby, thank you so much for joining us. I, like, I feel every time, I mean, this is my selfish um selfish does selfish part of actually setting these interviews up like i learn so much when i'm talking to people because i'm like what do you mean oh how do you do that so i'm ga- i'm gaining from i'm gaining from talking to people particularly amazing business people yes i did use the phrase and i and i and i stick to it because for me uh, um that's how i learn i learn by listening to other people and i learn by going oh yes i've heard that before why am i not doing that okay let's get on and do it and you, you know you built up your business i think it was $7 million equivalent. So, you know, that's amazing to do in two years. Um, yeah. and if we were um, counting the hours and in, in US equivalency, it would probably be 7 million, you know, yeah. in what they charge on that side a year that's in two incredible. years. Yeah. That's incredible. So thank you so much for taking the time. Um, I look forward to hearing your personal interview. How do we get in contact with you? If we get in contact with you and uh, how do we connect and what's the next step? Cause I know you were telling me you've got a 
six hour, seven hour uh, day long training, which you've got into um, book form. It may not be ready yet. I know you've got loads of videos on your LinkedIn that we can connect with. How else can we connect? Well, thank you. So I think anybody that searches for virtual actuary will find me. Okay. And anybody that searches for ID Kaimovitz will find me. They're most welcome to reach out. There's a million ways to find me on LinkedIn or you know, via the website and, and so on. So they can find me with absolute pleasure or virtual actuary on Instagram. Fortunately, we were the only virtual actuary in the world when we started. <clears throat> so any search of virtual actuary, you'll, you'll get hold of me in a split second. And um, so I have developed <clears throat> a, um, it was a byproduct of a byproduct. You know, so so I was invited over the last year and a half to speak at a few conferences about disruption and about the fourth industrial revolution because our business fits into that mold. And subsequently, so that's the, the byproduct of, of running the business, virtual actuary. And then one of the clients asked me if I could put together a one day workshop from the 30 minute talk. So I did. So I've put together, it's about a five hour talk, but um but I, I, you know, I can refine it, obviously. So the reality is, is that any, you know, you know, it's a byproduct of a byproduct, which I'm turning into a book anyway. Although the truth is actually becoming more so like a video, you know, like video uh, series. It's actually just easier just to talk about the subject. Yes. But if anybody actually wants their business to go through the course, you know, it's literally just we could probably do it in one day. They're most welcome to get in touch with me. You know, they all their managers can we can we can do it over the space of a day or half a day, whatever the case may be. And I go through topics like um, the fourth industrial revolution. What is it like to be a lean business? What is an organized collaborative? How to hire and manage millennials? Software that will make your business life more of a pleasure. It's really just about what we call the new age entrepreneur and kind of like how to deal with things at the moment that we're all facing. And I've called it new world, new business fundamentals, because these are fundamentals of business, which are different now from the ABCs that were 15 years ago, or 10 years ago, or five years ago, or even sometimes three weeks ago. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of also like, pivoting my time a little bit as well, although I'm quite busy, to be honest. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, thank you. Yeah, I know. I know you're busy because we're yeah, getting hold of you and uh, getting this interview. I'm glad that we were able to uh, put it in the diary. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll look forward. I hope lots of people connect to you. And thank you so much for providing us with some wisdom today. See you later. Thanks for chatting. Bye.